What are the chances of you becoming the victim of a violent crime? Fact. Nine out of ten people will be directly affected by crime during their lifetime. Who's safer, men or women? Fact. Women are the number one target of violent crime. Rape is now the fastest growing major crime in America. One in two females alive today will be raped during their lifetimes, many more than once, given the recent escalation of this crime. Can you spot a criminal? What does a suspicious looking person look like? Most criminals blend in and most of us would have a difficult time picking the real criminal. This woman appears to be an easy target. Well, she's not. This man has picked the wrong woman. Watch closely. Imagine having the power to simply touch someone and instantly stop aggression, hostility, and immobilize them without violence or even the threat of violence. Sound like something from Star Wars? Well, you've just witnessed pulse wave technology in action, a product of the space age. The device, totally disguised, was attached to her keys. It's called a myotron, and it can save your life. I'm Linda Watkins. Someone once said, knowledge is power. So we're going to expose some of the myths about crime. And we're going to give you some answers on how you can protect yourself and your family, including an in-depth look at the new science of pulse wave technology, which you just witnessed in action. But first, see if you can find yourself or someone you know in any of these situations. And it's on. We just died. She was shopping. He followed her home. The rest is history. And her children are now orphans. The question, how do we protect ourselves? We're here with career criminologist Janice Daisy, looking for some answers. Janice, you investigated this case. Was this woman in the wrong place at the wrong time, or what? With this nation's crime rate, the wrong place at the wrong time could be anywhere at any time. In this case, she was shopping. He followed her home. He broke in. She then sprayed him with an aerosol. And it didn't work? Obviously not. The truth is there are a world of problems with most of these products. They were first developed for use on animals, not humans. They lose pressure. They're difficult to aim. If a breeze is blowing, if he's wearing glasses, 
if he moves, turns his head, or even puts up his hand. All you've done is to challenge him and to increase the danger to yourself. I see. Now, how did he get in the house? Right through the front door. Let's look at some videotape which shows you how easy it is. Despite the deadbolt being locked, a small crowbar is used to force the door frame away from the deadbolt. The deadbolt doesn't necessarily break, but the door frame does almost every time. 20 seconds and he's in. Now watch this. As you can see, sometimes they just let us open the door for them. Also, a dog barking or lights left on is just advertising you're not home, and contrary to popular belief, dogs are easy to take out. So Janice, what's the answer? It's sitting right in front of you. My opinion? Pulse wave technology. All right, Janice, hold that thought, for you and I are about to talk with other experts and crime victims, such as Lauren Cox, who thought she was safe walking with her boyfriend in a public area, ended up being gang raped, and Sharon Comlos, who's going to tell us what it's like to be shot, permanently blinded, kidnapped, raped, stabbed, and left for dead. Mr. David Eaton, past president of the legendary Colt Firearms, is going to tell us why a gun may not be in our best interest. And this lady, Pam Garrett, a 12-year veteran instructor of self-defense, standing over six feet tall, who says many self-defense courses give women a false sense of security. Mr. Eaton, you're the past president of Colt Firearms, the legendary firearm company, and also considered one of the world's experts on guns. Can you tell me why you don't advocate women using guns. Pick that up like you were afraid of it. I don't like it. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is true that I'm not an advocate of, of guns in, the, in a situation such as we're talking about. Uh, I, I've never believed that uh, guns were an adequate and acceptable method for self-defense. They breed violence. The presence of a gun accentuates the possibility for violence. Why do you say guns tend to promote violence? Because whenever you display anything that resembles a weapon, you force the other person to make a decision. That decision is either to retreat or become more aggressive. But you force that decision. You've challenged him, and in doing that, you dramatically increase the potential for violence. Well, one might ask, if all this doesn't work, what does? Well, one answer may be an amazing little device, a product of the space age, called a pulse wave myotron. It's disguised not to look like a weapon, look like a weapon, but rather something you might have with you or attached to your keys. And while non-lethal, they say it's amazingly effective. We're here with Dr. Russell Wilson, MD, PhD, and neurologist who will explain how pulse wave technology works. And then we're going to watch this amazing little instrument in action. Dr. Wilson, how exactly do pulse waves affect the human body? Well, simply stated, hostility originates in the hypothalamic region of the brain. And our voluntary muscles are controlled by electrical impulses originating in the autonomic region of the brain. When you touch someone with a myotron, the electronic pulse waves interrupt or block these signals. So it intercepts the brain waves and scrambles the nervous system. Basically, yes. Well, what happens then? The person will simply collapse and remain very passive. For how long? Depending upon the length of contact. They can be immobilized for up to 30 minutes, and they may remain passive for hours. And it's not lethal? It's absolutely non-lethal, and recovery is complete with no after effects. Thank you, Doctor. I'm sure our audience is as anxious as I am to see the pulse wave myotron work. So we're going to watch this amazing instrument in action. She stands six foot four inches tall. Her name is Pamela Garrett, and she's a black belt 12-year veteran self-defense instructor. Pamela, 
Can we sit down so I don't feel quite so short? Sure. Pam, you carry a Myotron. Why? Because it works every time. No muss, no fuss, no violence. I'll buy that. Show us how it works. Couldn't be simpler. You activate it by pulling the safety slide back and pressing the hidden button. The pulse wave comes from the tip. It has a wrist strap so you don't have to hold it when carrying packages and so that someone cannot take it away from you. Also, it has a quick release key attachment. Keys are the most commonly carried item on earth, so it's simple. If you have your keys, you're protected. Pam, earlier I asked if you would mind if we demonstrated it on you, but you wouldn't volunteer. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm Ed, and this is my wife, Shelley. I told her again and again, nobody's safe anymore. And since I'm not around all the time, we have to get you a gun. She says she doesn't want a gun, especially with the kids around. Then she mentions this Myatron thing. And honestly, I thought it was some kind of a stun gun. Anyway, she keeps on and on. It's got a money-back guarantee and a lifetime warranty. So I ordered one. It arrives, and I checked it out. Take it from me. It's no stun gun, and this is no toy. In one one-thousandth of a second, it completely scrambles your nervous system, yet it's still safe. Never needs recharging. On one lithium power pack, it can actually test fire every day for 10 years. I'm a skeptic, and I'll tell you, <laughs> I was impressed. So like I was telling her, she doesn't need a gun. Best idea I ever had. So I bought one for myself in black. <laughs> His name, Thomas Rossi, serial rapist, repeat offender. His preferences were simple, female and blonde. Sharon Comlos, female and blonde. You were on your way home when you noticed a car pulling alongside you. At that moment, you had no way of knowing that that demented creature driving the other car would in seconds turn your life into a living hell. He fired three shots into your car. The second one hit you, blinding you for life. Sharon, tell us in your own words what happened next. Well, there was a flash of light and then suddenly darkness. And a man's voice appeared out my window offering to take me to the hospital. He helped me out of my car and into his. We drove for a while and the car came to a stop. He helped me into a building and the door slammed shut behind me. And suddenly I realized I was not in a hospital. My God, Sharon, this was the man who shot you. Yes, I was now in a room with a man I was unable to see. He pushed me down on a mattress and then put a pillow over my face and tried to suffocate me. The whole ordeal lasted about 11 hours. Um, then throughout the night, I was stabbed and raped. In the morning, I was awakened to the sound of a plastic trash bag and the sounds of my clothing being thrown into that trash bag. And then the man reached down and picked at my wrist as if he was feeling for a pulse. And then I heard him leave. The police speculate that he left me to find a way to dispose of my body. And when I realized he had gone, I got up, made my way to the door, and walked out onto a balcony. Now, let me get this straight. You were on the balcony, and you couldn't see, but you could tell you were outside. Yes, because I could feel the warm concrete under my feet, and I could feel the warm sun on my body. But I was afraid he was going to come back very quickly, so I started to scream. Now, a man that was driving by saw you on that balcony, and he took you to the hospital. Yes, and if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today.